Hello there, this is Michelle Pekansky Brock, and this brief video is intended to introduce you a little bit further to VoiceThread for those of you who are new to it and to show you a little bit um, more about how I've used it in my classes. Um, this is my My Voice page. Uh, from my My Voice page, I have a list of all the groups that I have either created or that I am a member of. I create groups for my classes. This is one of my class groups, SP12, which refers to the semester, and the group name is Daguerreotype, which is a historic photography process. This is a history of photo class. If I click there, which I have already done, it shows me all the voice threads that I have created with that class, or that I have created and shared with that group. Um, so that's what you're seeing here. You'll see that this is page one of two. Now I can simply um, at any point I can make changes to any voice thread simply by lo um, clicking on the little gear menu that says show options and it'll give me several different options here. I can remove it from the group. I can make a copy of that voice thread and that's the option that I use if I want to reuse a voice thread in the um, upcoming term. And when I click on make a copy, it will actually give me options to copy all comments, which in that case would copy also the existing student comments. Or I could copy the voice thread um, and not copy any comments at all. Or I could copy the voice thread and only copy my comments, which is generally the option that I select. I could also click share if I wanted to change the share settings for that voice thread or I could edit it. If I clicked on edit it would allow me to add additional slides to the voice thread, to remove slides, to reorder the slides, um, and keep in mind that each slide contains its own distinct media file. So I could add a movie to this voice thread, I could add an image to the voice thread, I could add whatever type of media file I wanted to the voice thread. So everything is always fluid and that's always very important to remember. So what I'm going to do is just click on this voice thread up here to open it for you. Um, and it actually opened to the middle of the voice thread because this was the last slide that I was on in that voice thread the last time I looked at it. What you'll see in this interface here in the center is the slide I'm going to orient you to a few features here. Down here at the bottom you see some um, tiny thumbnails of slides. If I click one time there it will pan out on the voice thread and it will give you a bird's eye view of um, the ingredients or all of the slides in the voice thread. Now what you can't tell from here is that this is a mix of media types. Most of these are um, began as PowerPoint or actually keynote slides we should say, we could just generalize and say presentation slides. Um, they could also be straight images that you could upload. This here is actually a movie file or a video that I've uploaded and I'll show you that a little bit more closely. So from here you can zoom into any one slide that you would like. I'm going to go to the first slide and show you that I always start my uh, voice threads with a title slide and an introduction here. Welcome to this voice thread about the wet plate process and other mid 19th century photographic advancements. Now what you're going to see is I have replicated that audio comment using another voice thread identity which is what appears over here and that identity is also created within my own account I can toggle to many different identities by clicking down here. My son has his own identity. I have a sample identity which I click to when I want to leave samples for my students to demonstrate to them how I expect them to complete an assignment or respond to a prompt. And I have a variety of different colors that I toggle between when I'm leaving feedback for my students. Um, and this is my text identity. So. I use that one when I make a text alternative of a voice comment and that is important because it makes it accessible to learners who um, prefer text or who cannot hear. To move to the next slide you just click on the arrow and here I have some tips, instructions, grading criteria. 
This is the movie that you click to play. The wet plate process and other mid-19th century photographic advancements. The early 1840s were a time of explosive excitement throughout much of the West as the daguerreotype and calotype processes I'm just going to quickly pan through parts of this video here um, so you can get a sense of how it looks when it plays within the voice thread. But what's important here is that you understand that a movie file can be uploaded into any voice thread and that allows for screencasting to also play a prominent role within a voice thread. Turning a voice thread into a very multi-dimensional learning tool, it can be used to demonstrate to students how to do things using a whiteboard tool. Um, or, uh, you know, any different type of array of instructional activities. Uh, as you see over here, there's another text comment. If I click there, you'll see that I have linked the users out to the video on YouTube. And if I click on that link that I've added in that text comment, um, the video will open in another window, and that video has been captioned. So anyone who the needs the wet plate process and other mid 19th century photographs. So anyone who needs access to those captions will have them available there in YouTube. So let's go forward to another slide, so I can show you another feature of VoiceThread. On this slide, you see my introductory comment that simply reads the text on the slide here. So my text on my slide is serving as my text transcript of my voice. This is a student comment here, and this is feedback that I've left for that student. I'm going to play that student's comment so that you can see an example of a video comment that was recorded with her webcam and so that you can also get a sense for how the webcam adds for some wonderful opportunities for learning um, that you may not actually think about at first. Carte visites were used um, for many purposes. Um, the average person would use them to you know, send pictures to family or to friends. Um, businessmen could use them similarly, like we use business cards today um, to give to customers or potential customers. And then, of course, politicians use them to further their their agendas. Um, in the screen, in the voice thread, it shows. Um, I believe it's Abraham Lincoln, and I actually wanted to show an example. My grandfather had one of Chiang Kai-shek. You can see the, the markings on the side. I have no idea what they say, but that's him. And this was put into an album by my grandfather um, when he returned from the war. So what that video comment allowed for my student, Brandy, to do was not only respond to the prompt, but also to bring in an object uh, from her own family heritage and share it with the class. Um, and that is really an outstanding way to demonstrate how she's using VoiceThread to, um, you know, demonstrate that she's making deeper connections between the curriculum and her own life and sharing that back with the class. Um, that's something that generally is not able to be achieved in something like a traditional discussion forum. So when we think about using tools that accommodate voice and video, it's really important to think about these wonderful unexpected outcomes that come along with them. So I hope that um, illustrates a little bit about how I use VoiceThread in one particular way in my online class. Um, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them.